Welcome back, welcome back people. So today I have with me a Raspberry Pi, 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 and a Raspberry Pi as well. I've noticed that on the channel I've made quite a few videos about Raspberry Pis in general, but I probably haven't gone through exactly what each Raspberry Pi can be used for, or maybe who each Raspberry Pi was actually designed for. So that's what I'm going to try to do in this video. So again, this is a Raspberry Pi, but this is a Raspberry Pi Pico. That's the Raspberry Pi Pico version one. So this is the original one. This is a Raspberry Pi Pico two, but double you again because of the Wi-Fi chip. Now who were these designed for? These are microcontrollers and as the name states it's a very tiny device micro which controls other things. These are not the only microcontrollers on the market. I'm going to bring two of them into view right now and this one is called the Arduino Uno. The Arduino Uno did a Raspberry Pi before the Raspberry Pi was even out. So this is the old Arduino Uno which is also a microcontroller again used to control tiny devices. I will put a few of those in frame in a few minutes and then next we have the Arduino mega relatively larger device compared to the arduino uno but again significantly faster and has more features built into the board for example more gpio pins more ram faster processor so on and so forth so these are the old microcontrollers still very useful today however the raspberry pi in my opinion has to take the crown for a few reasons and i'll go over a few of them here quickly but this is the arduino uno again and size wise the raspberry pi is roughly two two to three times smaller than the arduino uno but the arduino uno only comes in at 16 megahertz whereas the the processor on the Raspberry Pi Pico, the original one, 133 megahertz for a single core. This has two CPU cores on there, meaning you get roughly 260 megahertz per second. Now, 16 megahertz versus 260 megahertz. That's a huge difference. So what is a microcontroller again? A tiny device that is used to control other devices. Now, microcontrollers are built into things that we use every day. So your fridge, your microwave, your smart door. These two devices here are two things that we can use a microcontroller to control. So this first one here, this is a PIR, a passive infrared sensor. And essentially this is a motion sensor. You see this, sometimes you'll be at university, college or wherever, and you look in a toilet somewhere that has automatic lighting, which means that when you walk into the room, the light comes on straight away, probably has something like this in the corner somewhere. And typically speaking, you would have a microcontroller. So one of these devices here controlling how this works. Next, we have a pin pad. And this is probably something that most of you will recognize. At some point in time, you would have had to type in a code to enter a door or a code to enter your hotel or code to enter your school. Normally a microcontroller would be attached to this. So you would have the microcontroller linked to this somehow using a breadboard or some wires or some circuitry or it put into some case. And the code on the microcontroller would then control this device. And depending on what you enter, you would be allowed entry or not. I have dozens of devices like this. I'm not going to go through every single one of them. I just wanted to show. So now you might be thinking, now we know what a microcontroller is. How do we use a microcontroller and who's a microcontroller for? You would have a micro USB cable for this specific device. There are some devices that use USB C. And what you do, you plug this into your computer and you can program this specific device using C, so the C programming language, MicroPython and the CircuitPython. And again, it does not have an operating system. So you would have to plug this into a computer, program it, tell it what devices you have attached, give it the instructions you need to give it. And once you're finished, if you can power this with like a portable charger or something, then you could have it as a standalone device running whatever input and output devices you have attached to it. So that's all I can really explain about the microcontroller at the moment. Keep an eye on this playlist and what I will do, I'll be adding videos in here on how to use this specific microcontroller along with a few of the components I showed earlier. If you check out my unit 19 playlist, which is unit 19 IOT, that's a BTEC level three course, you'll see how this can be used. Next, we have the Raspberry Pi 4 on the left and on the right, we have the Raspberry Pi 5. Both these devices are more or less the same type of device. These are not microcontrollers. These are microcomputers. So simply a small computer, but they have been labeled as SOC, which is system on a chip. So this one single chip here is an actual computer that you can put an operating system onto. So some people have done Windows, Linux, Android, whatever you want can be installed on this system. This does have a lot more capability and a lot more power than the microcontroller, but they're not really meant to be used for the same type of things, even though this does have all the features of the microcontroller. The microcontroller does not have all the features of this. Really and truly, the only thing they have in common are the GPIO pins here. So back on the microcontroller, these pins that you see here, they go into this is thing is known as a breadboard. These things go into the breadboard and you can plug other cables into here. So jumper wires, and then you can connect them to input or output devices. So the same thing can be done with these devices. These pins here are the GPIO pins, general purpose input output pins. And these allow you to do exactly the same thing. Plug a jumper cables onto here or put sensors on here and put actuators or whatever input or output devices you want to use. You plug them into these pins, you program it on the actual computer itself. This is a computer. So you wouldn't need a laptop to do anything other than using this. And you would 
need a laptop because on this side, as you can see, we have a USB port. So you, yes, you can plug a mouse, a keyboard, a webcam, a, a, a USB controller. We have Ethernet port as well. So any single computer component that you can think of should work perfectly fine on this within reason. Since I started showing ports, I might as well go around and explain what each of these ports are. So starting here, we have USB 2 ports, USB 2 and USB 3. The black ones are USB 2, the blue ones are USB 3. So any device you see with blue ports are typically USB 3 ports. Next, we have an Ethernet port. So this is a one gigabit Ethernet port, I believe. And yes, this is a full size Ethernet port. You can plug directly into here without using Wi-Fi, but this does have Wi-Fi. So you can connect this to your Wi-Fi network and have it just like a normal computer. On the other side, I mentioned the GPIO pins already. You simply plug or jump off these to connect your input or output devices. This side, we have the display port. This is a DSI port. So what you can do, you can get like a touch screen. You can plug it into here. You can power it as well. And you can have this running whatever operating system you want. And you can actually use it with a touch screen, an actual touch screen. I believe it's seven inches. I had one. I think I sold it. And finally, on this side, this is the Raspberry Pi 4, by the way, we have a USB-C port for power. So this is what powers it. We have two micro HDMI ports. So you can plug these directly into a TV, a monitor, whatever you want. This port here, which looks very similar to that one, but this one is a CSI port, which is a camera serial interface port. And even though you can plug cameras into the USB ports here, they give you an extra port where you could plug a camera. This is what the HDMI cable might look like. On one end, you have a full size HDMI adapter. And on the other hand, you have the micro, which will go directly into the Raspberry Pi like this. Finally, we have the composite port and the headphone jack as well. You can plug a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in here, or you could do composite and get composite out. These things on the top, these are just heat sinks I've put over some of the chips because you need to kind of keep it cool. So just like you would a normal computer by having a cooling fan, I have a cooling fan attached to this normally. Wi-Fi chip, main processor, and RAM. At the bottom of the device, we don't really have anything but the micro SD card slot. And this is where you would typically plug in your micro SD card to run the operating system from. You don't have to do that anymore. There is an option where you can actually plug into the USB ports and boot from a hard drive or boot from an SSD attached. For example, I have this SSD here and I can plug into that port there and boot from the SSD instead of the micro USB. And that should be noticeably faster and more reliable. Next is the Raspberry Pi 5. This is a four gigabyte version again, similar to the Raspberry Pi 4 from earlier. This was actually sent to me by the people over at Raspberry Pi. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for sending this to me. I'm so excited to actually go through and start doing some projects. I have used a Raspberry Pi before, a Raspberry Pi 5 before. However, it wasn't my device, so I had to return it. But now I have one, I can do all the projects I want to do. So just like the Raspberry Pi 4, the Raspberry Pi 5 is a microcomputer. So simply a small computer and is again known as a SOC, system on a chip. So we have the entire system that we need on a single chip again, RAM, processor, Wi-Fi, motherboard, power supply obviously needs to be plugged in and you need to put your storage on to put your operating system onto. <laughs> Raspberry Pi 4 on the left, Raspberry Pi 5 on the right. And as you can see, they look very similar. The Raspberry Pi Foundation, they've tried to keep the form factor exactly the same so you can reuse stuff from all the Raspberry Pis. On the front here again, we have the same thing, two USB 2 ports and two USB 3 ports. Same GPIOs on this side here. On this end, you'll see the extra port there. You might be wondering, why does the Raspberry Pi 5 have three ports and the Raspberry Pi 4 only have two? So the Raspberry Pi 4 has a display port and a camera port, so CSI and DSI. Camera, serial interface and DSi display serial interface. On the Raspberry Pi 5, it's no longer camera and display separate. You can use either one of these for camera or display. But this one here, this is the big one. This is a PCI Express port. And for anyone that knows about gaming laptops or computers in general, PCI Express is linked more directly to the processor, meaning you can get much better speed. I can plug in a PCI Express SSD. I can plug in a graphics card. So you can have a full-fledged graphics card on a desk, being powered obviously, plugged into here somehow, and you can have this running games that you would normally run on consoles or PC. And and on this side, we have again, more or less the same things. USB-C going from the left, HDMI, two HDMI ports in the middle. And the Raspberry Pi 5 has actually done away with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which doubled as a composite port. Next, this is a keyboard, but it's not just a keyboard. It is actually a Raspberry Pi 4 stuffed inside a keyboard. This is called the Raspberry Pi 400. And just like the normal Raspberry Pis, we have more or less the same types of things. We don't get access to the camera port and the display port, obviously, but we have an Ethernet, USB 1, USB 2, 
2, two USB 3s, the USB C to power it, two HDMI ports, and access to the micro SD card port here, which we can plug in to get our operating system. Under this cover, we have the GPIO pin, so you can still access your general purpose input output pins to connect your input and output devices. You might be asking, why would they create this if they already have the Raspberry Pi? This is just a much nicer form factor to get you going. So you have everything you need in a single device, keyboard already attached, and as it stands, the only thing you might need to attach now is a mouse, which can go into any one of these USB ports, your HDMI cable to go to a display, and you're good to go. So again, we have a Raspberry Pi 4, which is this device here, stuffed into this keyboard. It's in a slightly different form factor, so it doesn't look exactly like this, but all the components on here are inside of this keyboard here. Last but not least, we have a Raspberry Pi 500. So similar to the Raspberry Pi 400, which had a Raspberry Pi 4 stuffed inside of it, now we have a Raspberry Pi 5 stuffed inside of this keyboard. It's the same layout, same form factor, same set of features as what's on the Raspberry Pi 5. But again, you won't get access to your display port and your camera port. I will do a separate unboxing of this and compare it directly to the Raspberry Pi 4 size-wise and looks-wise just, just to see how much it differs. So just a quick recap, the Raspberry Pi Picos, this is the Pico W again, the one with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. These are microcontrollers. These are used to control other tiny devices, input devices and output devices. So for example, a motion sensor and an actuator. The Raspberry Pi 4 and the Raspberry Pi 5, these are fully fledged computers that they've shrunk down and put in a single motherboard, a single device like this. These have everything you would need to run a full operating system. You can install Windows on here. You can install Android on here. You can install some version of Linux on here as well. The default installation version for these are called Debian. So Linux, Debian or Debian Linux and it's called Raspberry Pi OS. I'll put a link in the description as well. Anything you can do with a normal PC or a computer, you can do with these, albeit it might be a bit slower depending on what you're doing. But these are fully fledged computers. This is only for controlling devices. This does not need an operating system. That needs an operating system to work. In any case, thanks for watching. Hopefully that was useful. Stay tuned. More videos are definitely coming. I almost dropped that there.